Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time, and we have a poll winner here. Which one, Dan? We have Brewster's Millions, starring Richard Pryor. This was third place on our poll for like an entire week, and you guys came roaring back to make this win. In the last two days, it's yes. into the lead, yeah. Yes, congratulations to all those of you that chose. Thanks to everybody that voted. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. We're for the least pitcher in the minor leagues of life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> On a very hot plate. Oh, look at train Good tracks. Lord, it's just tracks in the middle of the field. <laughs> yeah, there are. Good Lord. It's got to be a hazard, right? Oh, oh that's fine. Oh, you almost had that. I bet you feel like a big piece of shit, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they got soft for a train, really. <laughs> Somebody's going to die on this field. Boy, that's that's as minor league as that gets. He's been taking pictures of me for the last three games. I'm telling you, I think he's the scout for the big league. This is Hackensack, New Jersey. The train's going through the outfield right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He threw you an easy one. Come on, man. That's on you. Go, beer here. Go, beer. Allow me. Oh, jeez. God. Thank you very much. Can't be good on the mouth, right? No. We were reading in a medical journal on massages. The theory is that if you're nude and you get a massage, that's the best thing for you. <laughs> sure, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You might like to uh, try the theory nude with us. I think they're kind of cute. This one's especially cute. Okay. Hey, everybody's got their preference, man. Ah, uh, Rudy! I didn't do anything wrong, baby. They tried to pick us up. <laughs> She's on J Street. You better send somebody down here. There's gonna be a fight. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that escalated really fast, man. All right, man. Oh, okay. Don't mess with the pitcher. He knows how to throw one. Throw yeah. arms, man. These guys can handle themselves. Yeah. There's a bar full of people. We're the only ones in jail. I don't think it's racial, you know, because I'm in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said it was. Front office is washing its hands of you two. They just gave the both of you your unconditional releases. Next year they're going with the college draft choices. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game there. Yeah. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Oh, guilty, but with a real good excuse. <laughs> God. Uh, the, no. I know who she is. She's in uh, Family Matters. She's Carl's mother. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am representing parties who have instructed me to post bail for the defendants. <laughs> who is he? It's the scout. They want me. <laughs> no, it's not what you think, man. You gotta owe these guys money. Yeah. I'm Ed Brownfield. This is Mr. George Granville, Mr. Norris Baxter. You? you ever heard the name Rupert Horn? No. Rupert Horn was your great uncle. Oil and real estate. And you, Mr. Brewster, are the sole living heir of your great uncle Rupert Horn. <gasps> Boy, did you fall upstairs, Brewster. <laughs> Greetings from the grave. Don't look so surprised. Didn't you know your great grandfather was a honky? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have some fun. <laughs> Guy looks crazy. Yeah. When I was seven years old, my daddy caught me smoking a cigar. Locked me in the broom closet with nothing but a box of cigars. Wouldn't let me out <laughs> till I finished every last one. Oh no! <laughs> Jeez. You have thirty days in which to spend. 30 million bucks. If you can do it, you get 300 million. Holy Jesus. You're not allowed to own any assets. You can hire anybody you want, but you can't give this money away, and that includes buying the Hope Diamond for some bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> you must not destroy what is inherently valuable. Oh. That's instant disqualification. You're not allowed to tell anybody. Why can't I tell my friends? Because I don't want anybody help me out. <laughs> Nobody help me out with those cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I love this guy. Well, he's bitter about those cigars. Yeah. You can have a million dollars right now and forget the whole thing. But if you fail, you don't get diddly. Challenge accepted. I think I'll take that challenge. Yeah. This is a million dollars you raid Uncle Smoke about. Oh, <laughs> i never seen that much money in my life. Quite difficult to spend money without accumulating assets. I'm going to go for the 300 million. Of yep. course you are. That's why we're here. Yep. We're going to assign one of our paralegals from the accounting department to keep track of your expenditures and receipts. Mr. Brewster, it's very nice to meet you. It doesn't rain, it pours. <laughs> Mike, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you Mike, right? Spike? I think I just inherited 30 million dollars. Think. Oh, is that all? <laughs> 30 million. Why didn't you tell me 30 million dollars? 
30 million dollars. Oh, yeah, now, now you figured you. it out, yeah. Woo. Looks like Colombian drug money. Right. <laughs> they had that waiting on pallets for you, man. Yeah. Jake, I'd like to hire you as my official photographer. Salary $10,000 a week. Whoa, I'd pay him $10,000 a day. I'd go faster. Yeah. What do they pay you here? About three fifty a week before taxes. I'll pay you $4,000 a week. And you get 20 other guys, and I'll pay them $3,000. Follow me. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he just took all the bank security. Jesus. They have nobody watching their money. <laughs> Somebody will come in and rob the place. I'm in New York, and I just inherited $30 million bucks. You're so rich. Why are you calling me collect? They only gave me $100 bills, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> he had to borrow a quarter. <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> Sucks being rich, doesn't it? Yeah. How would you like to be my personal driver for the next 30 days at $5,000 a week? You want a higher piece of shit cup for me? <laughs> <laughs> the country, America, I love it. Is that Yakov yeah. Smirnoff? Is that who that is? Yeah. I don't know. Most likely. <laughs> Everybody, anybody want to go to lunch? I'm buying. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> All the possibilities going through my head right now. I love it. What's the most expensive wine? Oh, that's the Chateau Lafitte, hundred dollars a bottle. That's it. You guys like a beat? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Be the greatest day ever if you're anybody in this restaurant right, right now. I want to find a job for you yet, by the way? Like designated eater? <laughs> I don't want a job. I'm his friend. I'm sure he'll find a stupid job for him. Yeah. Montgomery Brewster, who earlier today inherited thirty million dollars tax free. Tax free. How do you get tax free? Yeah, <laughs> in New York. I'm forming a corporation tonight. Uh, what kind of business is that, Mr. Brewster? I think you should ask my senior vice president, Mike Nolan. I'm paying him hundred thousand dollars a month. Did I say something to all the people who thought I was a loser, Jeff? Right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Way to stick it to the man. The top two floors have already been reserved for the next month. I'll pay you one million dollars. <laughs> Sign here, please. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's easy to negotiate when when money's no object. Oh, you're a different breed here, aren't you? Mm, he's a senior VP. Yeah. He's got dressed like it. This was made for Johnny Bench. He didn't pick up, so they gave it to me. A catcher's mask. <laughs> oh, Lord. Great is your accountant. He's nice, but she thinks I'm a lowlife. Gentlemen, do you think I'm a lowlife? Oh, no, oh, Mr. No, Brewster. Mr. Brewster, not with <laughs> these clothes. Well, they're shills. They'll say whatever yeah. you want. Warren! Monty Brewster, pleased to meet you. Oh, my. We're going to be late for that benefit. Benefit? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the committee to ban contact sports. I'd like to make a small contribution, if I may. $100,000, okay? $100,000? Monty, this is <laughs> way against you. Two Louis the Sixteenth chairs. Mr. Cox, you know so much about all this stuff. My ex-wife Marilyn's a decorator, and I guess a lot of it rubbed off on me. Mm. Simp. <laughs> I'd like for you to redecorate my offices. $250,000? You're a lawyer. You are not a decorator. <laughs> I don't know. Have you heard the way he's been speaking? Marilyn, she could help you. I'd pay her $100,000 if that's not an insult. I'd have to ask her, of course. Let's go, Warren. Are you leaving? Yeah. Oh, goodness, no. I have more money to give away. Come in. Yeah. <laughs> want to take a month off to be Mr. Brewster's interior decorator? <laughs> <laughs> it could make it easier for us if you could act as our eyes and ears. Mm. Absolutely. Double agent, man? No. Mm -hmm. Kick some fun around here. Let's kick some fun around here. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? Who the hell, are you? Who the hell am I? I'm Morty King. King Rick Moranis. Oh, my God, it is. Yeah. I couldn't tell with the beard. I am going to do for you a post-modern fantasy. We're going to knock out the walls, too. Everyone. Everyone. Everywhere. Everywhere. Spend our expense. <laughs> okay, Jesus. I'm annoyed already. Yeah. You know, I'd like you to do it. I'd like you to do it. Choke this guy. Choke this guy. Come on. Choke this guy. Thank you. He's getting annoyed. This is the Arabian Desert. It is as dry as a bone. What I would like to do is go to the North Pole, select a good size iceberg, and sail ah, Brewstersburg, number one, to Mecca. <laughs> I love it. How much money do you need? <laughs> I mean, it's an idea. I'd like to bet on every long shot in every race, 50 to 1 and over, this week at Aqueduct. How much would it take to get this off the ground? This is a job right now. Man. Right? It Jeez. really is. Loola versus Notre Dame in a field hockey game. I want to bet $50,000 that Loola wins. Mm, I hope you don't win on any of those. Uh, Brewster! Charlie! How you doing, my man? I just bought an iceberg. What? <laughs> <laughs> I rented our home stadium because we're going to play an exhibition game with the Yankees, and I'm pitching. He actually negotiated a deal with the Yankees? I don't know, man. He is now. <laughs> yeah, she got the Bulls logo on the copters. <laughs> Brewster! Buy a small away from Jersey, then you get these chop 
Rivers to fly us back here. If we took the bus, we would have been here two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Made it completely unnecessary. Wait till you see the apartments I rented for you guys. Got an apartment for these guys. Fan out, there's rich swimming pools. Everybody's got their own place. Jesus. Oh my God. You're doing good, Brewster. Keep it up. You'll spend that whole 30 million in a week. I'm going to have the bus take us over to the island. Brewster, the airport's on Long Island. You flew us all the way in from the airport to here so we could take the bus back to Long Island? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That might work. I don't even want to try that, man. <laughs> Mr. Drake. Um, could I come up there and talk to you for a minute? No. Mm -hmm. Angela. Yes. Give me five minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. I no. <laughs> Hi, Eugene Provost, financial advisor. A pleasure to meet you. Oh. Who the hell is this? He's a big league money man. Money? I don't need money. Yes. I need to get rid of money. <laughs> I only get paid if you profit from my advice. A hundred thousand dollars a week plus fifteen percent. I'll make an exception in your case, Mr. Brewster. Doesn't take much, does it? Nope. It's way past your bedtime, Mr. Drake. You'll never know, Mr. Brewster. Be sure to get home before the sun comes up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> now Eugene is helping me out with my investments. You know, precious metals, old stamps, stuff like that. Stamps. Do you sell stamps? Well, let me show you, Mr. Uh, Montgomery Brewster. Montgomery Brewster. Ah, uh, <laughs> he pecked up real quick. Mm -hmm. Accidentally printed upside down. Of the 100 of these stamps <laughs> originally printed, this is the only known copy in existence. Baron Levitsky recently offered $850,000 for it, and I laughed in his face. <laughs> 1. 1. 1.25. Oh, <laughs> but it's an asset. I'd say the stamp he's bought is a considerable asset. Here's the mail. Hackensack Bulls. Having a wonderful time. Best wishes, Monty Brewster. He used the stamp on it, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it isn't an asset anymore. He's mailed it. The son of a bitch. <laughs> That's genius. No way to blow a million. They are pissed off. <laughs> A small error in bookkeeping discovered at the last possible moment ought to do the trick. The $300 million will go to the firm, Granville, Baxter, and Cox. Oh, my God. The big story on Wall Street today is that Icebergs International now has a par value of over $9 a share. Oh, no, he made money. <laughs> yep. I want to sell my stock in the iceberg. Nothing but long shots, huh? Well, you just won yourself a cool million five, wise guy. Loyola 18, Notre Dame Zilch. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you broke that, man. <laughs> Divide it up amongst the many charities and everybody go back to work because this is a business and we're in the business of being in business and we're doing business and nobody's business. <laughs> what do you think of our postmodern fantasy? It's like an 80s bar. I don't want to walk in this room and say to myself, Monty. I want to die in this room. <laughs> and double the workman's salary. I mean, I mean, they look exhausted. Help out. Come on. Jesus. That music is terrible. That's kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Mr. Drake, your chariot awaits. This is a $125,000 car. Can't we just take a ride without having an argument? I promise not to spend any money. Hmm. Now, it's not fancy, but... I... <laughs> really? They just get rear-ended? They were parked. I'm terribly sorry. Are you all right? Yeah. Fine, fine. But you look hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Are you all right, Mr. Brewster? Montgomery Brewster? Yes, that's me. I, I really don't feel very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> you think you could settle this out of court for a couple of hundred thousand dollars? Two X Y. Three hundred thousand? Oh my that's god. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you. Have a good day. Get a cold compress for that thing on your head. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking like Gorbachev there, man. <laughs> it wasn't that man's fault. Yes, I know it wasn't, but you just gave away $300,000. Boy, that girl is ungrateful considering all the things you've done to try to improve her. Get back to work, you two. Right. I see her making her move. Brewster today shelled out a record $600,000 for five cases of 114-year-old French wine. That has got to be the most expensive hangover this reporter has ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> I got some good news and some bad news for you. I made a couple investments for you. That's, that's okay. He just got, made you ten million dollars. Oh no! No! Just undone everything he's done. Ten million, ten million dollars, ten million, ten million, ten million. Oh, damn it! I'm right back where I started. Damn it! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> 
<laughs> took so long. <laughs> I'd like to be alone by myself. Sure, and there's no problem there, Monty. You know, you're probably getting psyched up for the Yankee game. He needs to tell somebody, just like in private, just be like, hey, this yeah. is what's going on. I need you to help me out here. I think we should consider the possibility of psychiatric help. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, man. And that's just your friends trying to be good friends. I know. Mr. Heller and Mr. Salvino have been pumping <laughs> scandalous amounts of money into slick advertising campaigns that so far have demonstrated little more than their ability to slander oh. each other. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There's the idea. Brewster for president. I figure voting for Salvino or Heller is just as silly as them running for office, which is just as silly as me running for office. <laughs> the only thing that's silly is the power of the people's vote. And I think the people should use it to vote for them. <laughs> One of the above. Yes. <laughs> this is perfect. Why not? You actually don't want anyone to vote for you? Only an idiot would vote for me. I think the people should keep their money. They're going to need it after this election. It's actually a good uh, policy. Yeah. You might actually win this on accident. Right. <laughs> My lord, how you are going to blow money for advertising. <laughs> Isn't that illegal to buy votes? Probably, which means he'll have to pay money in little courts now. Yeah. You know how it is around election time? Two candidates are so repulsive. Repulsive is not the word. Yeah, We're all full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I never wear a suit and a tie. These are just things that politicians use to trick you into thinking that they're respectable. Get him, Brewster. He's right. Yeah, that's relevant even today. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Nope. He's running spots in all 52 states, just in case any New Yorkers are on vacation. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Don't vote for any of us. We're assholes! We're only <laughs> making age first! Drinking on Jesus. <laughs> he really don't care, does he? No. Kiss it all goodbye. This yeah. is perfect. The man's telling the truth and actually doing some good and getting rid of his yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> That's so comical. <laughs> Never see that. Who's trying to buy your vote? Yeah. Damn straight. Let me hear it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Brewster. What do you want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? Your people called my people. Bullshit. Your people made the first move. It's like a mob, mob meeting. meeting. Yeah. yeah. You heard what he said about us in his speech yesterday. Heller and Salvino are both just a couple of overgrown wharf rats. <laughs> yeah, I guess you should sue him for defamation of character. You and I are going to sue him for every cent he's got. Do it. It's very good, Heller. Very good. Wharf rats at City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional damage. <laughs> yeah, right. Can we take it? Did you say seriously, Mr. Brewster? It's like that old saying, if bullshit were money, I'd be a millionaire. Well, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old saying. <laughs> I love it. Between the New York Yankees, and are you ready for this? That. Oh, it makes things worse. <laughs> Jesus. Good slogan. <laughs> you know how many years I sat around listening to you guys complaining about you never get your shot? Well, the day we get our shot. You know what? That's a good point. He's mm -hmm. doing some good for these guys, too. Yeah. If nothing, they'll be celebrities for a few hours. You will be known now. Yep. I forgot to Hold the train for three innings. No, I'm sure Mondi had that train come through for mm -hmm. on purpose. Swing on, it's a hot shot. Yeah! Hey, good catch. Very nice. That's how you get noticed. That's good defense right there. Hey, Ken Dixon, man. It's a pleasure to be on the same field with you, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Yerser thinks he's cute, don't he? He sure does. <laughs> hey Dixon, I saw your wife on television too. Yeah, yeah she sure is an ugly bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> One word out of you, fat boy, and you eat your mask. Mm. You ain't gonna talk to me the way you did, Dixon. Ooh. Have you ever seen his wife? Yeah, ugly bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. There you oh, go. Man. You're just getting lucky here. These guys are making home run swings, man. Yeah. Warren Cox. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Uh, the refund. Didn't make the boss too happy. It all bent out of shape when he found out Mr. Brewster didn't like the furniture he got. He has no taste. The guy didn't care, man. Yeah. <laughs> yep, he's gone. Yep, it's Ken Dixon. He got, he got back at you for that one. <laughs> that is true Yankee baseball there, 
there, my friend. And New York Yankee. Guys in here tonight. I recognize him, yeah. Yeah. Other guy here was in a movie called uh, Bad Boys with Sean Penn, I think. Mm. You did good, Brewster, real good. I'm proud of you and all the guys. Hey, what the hell? This is the New York Yankees. Yeah, but that's got a sting to kind of know where you really are in the spectrum of things. I mean, he held them for two and a half innings. It's only a matter of time, though. Yeah. Especially if they were thinking his fastball was a changeup. <laughs> that was a valiant effort. Your Uncle Rupert would have been proud of you. I doubt it. <laughs> I only have $38,000 left. Unfortunately, it looks like you could win this election. The job carries a $60,000 annual salary, Oops. which I regret to say would be considered an asset. Who would have thought that you would actually win something telling people don't vote for me? Right here. I'd like to take a hand to the Yankees. Um, they had a damn mic out there waiting for him. Yeah. See, the election was supposed to be a joke. I don't want to be mayor. I never did. Gotta resign. I'm gonna throw a party tonight, and you're all invited. $38,000 party, why not? Might not go that far. Chuck Fleming again. <laughs> Leave me alone, Chuck. <laughs> Are there no other broadcasters in New York? So I guess this is goodbye. Don't you want to go to the party? I don't see what you could possibly be celebrating. You don't even have a job playing baseball anymore. And what do you do? You throw a party with your last 38,000. Yeah, but what a ride. <laughs> Why don't you wait until tomorrow? And then you'll know what this is all about. Just forget it, okay? I love you. Oh, if only she knew. We're accepting contributions for Mr. Bruce. Put some money in here now. I didn't bring my wallet. Thank you very much. This is generous. Not the whole wallet. Very Jesus. Generous. He needs some money. Yeah. Mr. Brewster, we took up a collection for you. I mean, you've paid us all so much money, we feel bad now that you broke. You know me. I'll just spend it. I can't take it. He just can't get away from it. Mm -mm. His great-grandfather was right. This was difficult. Yeah. You don't know. See, tomorrow. Yeah? Uh-uh. -uh. I almost let the cat out of the bag, Uncle Rupert. See, I can't tell my closest friend. Because my Uncle Rupert's a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> nice friend I turned out to be. You give me all that money for what? So I can play catch with you? Spike, you don't understand. I'm going to pick this, and I'm going to get tore up. Yes, sir. It's your champagne. This guy's all drunk or depressed? I think they're exhausted. Uh, I have, that's just my take on it. It's been a lot of partying, man. True. <laughs> it's after three, Mr. Brewster. I'm afraid you'll have to leave now. I believe everything you're wearing belongs to us, Mr. Brewster. They were nice while he had lots of money, huh? Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing the true nature of them, huh? <laughs> yeah, take your old shirt back. It's going to be nice to put that back on, though. You're going to feel so free. <laughs> so I can imagine wearing suits all the time. Yeah. Nice spot. <laughs> not not that one in the room. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, it is a nice spot. Yeah. It's ready, sir. What do you think? This is the room I could die in. Okay, boys. Take it all back. Damn. <laughs> what are you going to do when you get to 300 million, though? Just keep living the same life you got? You'll never guess who I voted for this morning. None of the above. Good job. Good man. To add to the confusion of today's events, former candidate Montgomery Brewster. None of the above the one. Only yesterday, and apparently... So there's no mayor. Guess you got to have a new, uh, new candidates. Well, if you're out there, Monty, I think you might be proud of what's happened in this city today. Chuck Fleming, Action News. Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> I'm proud of New York. Yeah. They made the right call. Oh, Monty. I've got wonderful news for you, Monty. I'm not oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh. Do you remember the $20,000 that you gave me as a deposit on the furniture? Here it is. You're not broke after all. Oh, this is a disaster. Bad timing. Yeah, but they're not supposed to do things like that. That's conspiracy to commit fraud. Yeah. I guess I didn't do so good. I still got $20,000 left. I know I lost. I'll sign what you want me to sign, and I'll get out of here. Hold on. Don't do it just yet. You got time. Warren, what are you doing? Shh, in a few seconds. I'm going to be a full partner just as soon as he signs that paper. Oh, yeah. You sleep. <laughs> the reason that he blew the $30 million was so that he could get his real inheritance of $300 million. Why didn't he tell me? Oh, it was a condition of his great uncle's will. He had to keep it a secret. Then why do you know about it? Well, if it's such a big secret, how come you know all about mm. it? Yeah. That too is a secret. Uh-uh. Yeah, I have all the receipts. Maybe you're not as thorough as you think you are. No, give me that. Monty, stop. 
He purposely withheld a $20,000 deposit so that money would think he'd already spent it. Totally preposterous. You are fired, Miss Drake. Whatever. She'll make more money from him than she will from you. Yep. You're a liar, Warren. You tricked me. Set me up. Oh, no, no, not at all. You're a terrible liar, Warren. And an awful decorator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Better than being a couple of rabbits. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're a lady. Get off. <laughs> there you go. But I'll do it for her. He had that coming. I'm going to take you to court, Brewster. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> Hit you again. <laughs> yeah. He paid you so much money. I'm going to need an attorney, Miss Drake. Would $20,000 be enough for a retainer? No, I don't have a degree yet. You can get a degree with $20,000. You need a receipt. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's smart. <laughs> you did it. You did it. I hereby declare that the full inheritance of $300 million is yours. There All we right. go. Yes. Way to go, Congrats. Man. Yeah. I sense conspiracy to defraud here. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I'm going to have to order a full investigation. Send them to the showers. Take about 20 years to dry off where you're going. <laughs> Better take a big towel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Real nice man. Uh, Warren, better learn your blues. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to be sued too. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. God, that was so close though. Yeah, they took that to the freaking wire. Right. Oh, but that was fun to watch. Well, that movie made me really happy there. That was just fun to like get lost in my imagination. Yeah. And what if I was in his shoes? How what would I have done? I was sitting here thinking, man, if I had thirty million dollars, what could I blow it on in thirty days? I've had conversations like this with people mm -hmm. where it's like, what if you had to spend what if you had to spend that money? Yeah. And they're all talking about like it's easy, I'd just rent Rolls Royces and put them in a and put them in a like smash derby or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, no, he already made, he made the stipulation at the beginning. You can't do that. You can't, like, use Picassos as your firewood. Right. Which means you couldn't take Rolls Royces like that and just because it's inherently valuable. You can't destroy valuable items just to just to do that. Exactly. Yeah, he had stipulations. They wanted to find out if you could do it. I think I understand why Rupert did it here. Mm -hmm. Because he was disappointed in the life he was leaving there. He's like, he didn't think he'd accomplished anything. So it's like, man, I want to see if you can accomplish something if you want this inheritance here. And spending this in 30 days without having an asset yeah. to show for it shows a lot of uh, resourcefulness on your part, I guess. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Because you know, he, he, he's, he basically it thought... It shows that you're worthy of the money, I guess. Right. He basically thought that Richard Pryor was a loser. Yeah. Because, you know, he's a minor league baseball player who's never amounted to much. You know, he's basically saying, you know, I want you to prove that you're not just going to take this money and, and do the douchey thing and just save it and get rich off of it. I want you to actually go out there and, you know, live your life and not be a loser for a little bit. Yeah, because we've had no relationship here. But if you think I'm just going to give you this money, you got another thing coming. Right. You're going to have to earn it because I had to earn it. I thought his analogy using that... Uh, Thing with the cigars in the closet mm -hmm. and that was a perfect way to put it there it's like i don't want i don't want anybody to help you yeah. nobody helped me with those cigars <laughs> i was like i don't know just the, the way an older person puts something sometimes is great right and i remember that old guy uh, the guy who played rupert he was in the movie uh batteries not included i remember that now he was like he was one of the older couples there that owned the little diner okay yeah he was the little guy cooking there it's been so long since i've seen that movie yeah I'm just sitting here like, I know you now. Okay. There's a lot of people in this movie that I recognize. They had Jerry Orbach there from Law & Order. Yeah. Of course, Richard Pryor and John Candy have been in all kinds of stuff. The the executor of the state, he's been in a lot of movies. The cab driver. The cab driver, Yakov Smirnov. Yeah, yeah that turned out to be Yakov yeah. oh, Smirnov for sure. <laughs> I don't know if I've actually seen him in anything. Yeah, right? Or the, the, guy, the guy in the uh, furniture shop there. Yeah, he's uh, done some stuff. The photographer, he's been in a lot of films. Oh, God. Who played the executor? The main guy? I can't think of the guy's name. He was in this. Maximum Overdrive. Yeah. He was As the, the diner owner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as uh, Mr. Hendershot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people in this thing. Good on them. They all played a beautiful role in this movie. Yeah. It's fun just watching them, you know, watching them just, like, call everybody jerks and assholes. Because, like, you know, you guys kind of are. This guy's got money and y'all just there trying to get your part of it. And they did. I think it, at that in a moment like that, it's like I need y'all to be this per, pe this kind of people right now, right. so that I can get rid of this money. 
in a, in a way, they were they were all helping him and didn't even know it. I know. So and yeah. that's the thing. If I had this kind of money, I'd be trying to do the same thing as friends are. Like, okay, let me get, get an accountant and, you know, see how much I can gain off of this. Right. And I gotta say, he was very resourceful all the way through this movie. Mm -hmm. Trying to spend that. Like, the best part of this whole thing, of the way he spent it, though, I thought, was that damn stamp. The stamp, yeah. That was incredible. That was a great use of the money right there. Yes, like. You should have bought that store out <laughs> of stamps. It's like every correspondence you send, you st you put a six hundred thousand dollars stamp on. <laughs> right. I'm glad he didn't because I wanted to see all the different ways you could do something there. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, because because you got all these guys trying to swindle you for money. Some of these things actually panned out though. The damn iceberg thing worked. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought there's a chance they could actually get some water there. I didn't think they'd make money on. It. Right. The, or like all the all the long shot bets paid out. Yeah incredible maybe there were things you should have avoided it's like yeah don't don't make gambles don't make gambles because they can win gambles can win what's well, odd that all the long shots ended up winning like that like i thought he, I thought he want, might win like one or two and just kind of get his money back but, but he won quite a bit well i mean the opposite happened of what you wanted when you gambled this time right most of the time when people gamble they want to hit big right he wanted to lose big and instead he hit big yeah maybe maybe that's the key to it you need to go gambling Wanting to lose. You know, I think there's something to this. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't care. I don't care. I am not that crazy fan. Not a chance. So, oh, also Rick Moranis we saw there. Oh, yeah. That was incredible, right? You saw him with a beard. That You never see that. That was so weird. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell it was him until you pointed it out. <laughs> I know. It's like I'm used to seeing you just like geeky little dude with glasses. Yeah. Like, hey, just, yeah, just an annoying guy who looked for a way to swindle money. He's still a geeky guy except without glasses. All the people just trying to do anything stupid thinking he's gonna pay for it because that's what he's been doing right it would have been fun to be in his shoes for a while though it's like man i'm gonna live in this fancy hotel yeah i'm gonna eat these fancy dinners have these parties every night with this incredibly expensive alcohol mm -hmm. would have been something else i think he had the right idea i probably wouldn't have gone around announcing it as publicly as he did but i think he had the right idea say so get the fanciest houses get the fanciest meals you know do donations help, help out your friends overpay everybody you know oh sure yeah i think he could have overpaid a little more honestly yeah he could have spent the whole 30 million a day if he wanted to but yeah but then we wouldn't have the movie nope no they did well now i'm sure i wonder if they were like that when they were making this movie it's like man we could spend this money really fast we got to slow down guys we got to find ways to make this drag out for a two-hour movie here i'm kind of curious what the actual budget was on this movie it weren't it weren't, it weren't no 30 million <laughs> sure, yeah. <probably> <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just to see what 30 million dollars looks like on pallets that was kind of cool mm -hmm. assuming that was actually 30 million it looked like it maybe i mean if that suitcase that had a million in it was any representation yeah probably all hundreds why not oh yeah imagine that you have nothing but hundreds so you need to borrow a quarter <laughs> to make a phone call you should have got some change when you had the bank. Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it was a fun movie. So I've always liked Richard Pryor, and you know, it was really, really him doing his thing out there. Right. <laughs> yeah, him and John Candy together, that was, that was sparks. John Candy didn't have as big a role in this as I thought he might. No, but, but he was, didn't need to. No, and he, he was a perfect, he was a perfect sidekick right. for Pryor here. And it just, it just went great. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was digging it. I wouldn't mind watching some more Richard Pryor movies now. Oh, yeah. yeah. The ones of his I've seen have been all great, so I'm looking forward to more of those in the future. Right. Fam, do you have any favorite Richard Pryor movies or John Candy movies for that matter? Let us know, guys. I want to hear what you got. There's good options both ways. I would think so. I haven't seen too many of them. I've seen, I've seen like Richard Pryor and like Superman, mm -hmm. but that's that's about it. And, and this, so... Yeah, so I'm I'm sure I'm sure there's other things I could be watching out there. So I know he was in one with Gene Wilder, I think. I think he's in a couple with Gene Wilder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let us know, guys. What's out there? Love to hear your thoughts. Well, guys, I think that's gonna do it there. Thank you so much to everybody that participated in our poll. You picked a great movie there. Mm. Um, I'm glad this won. I thought I'm I'm happy because it was a it was a long shot to win and it still won. So I mean, it, and it was a perfect way. <laughs> to actually watch this movie <laughs> because it was a long shot for him to win too. Just like so. Brewster, yep. Yeah, so that, that couldn't have been more of a, uh, a divine intervention on your parts, guys. <laughs> so, But as always, if you're brand new to the channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. Should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.